I have with me Timofey Bundarchev. He is the head of Asia and Eurasia program in the Valdai Forum. Uh, Mr. Bundarchev, uh, thank you for uh, chatting with us. Thank you. Uh, first question, uh, exactly what is the Valdai Forum? What does it do? And I understand that last year you launched an India Forum in the Valdai Forum. Uh, Valdai Forum is uh, the principal activity of the Valdai Club Foundation. The very name Valdai is the name of the lake in the northwestern part of Russia, where the forum has happened for the first time back in 2004 and brought together about 100 Russian and international distinguished experts in international politics and economics and regional development. So the purpose of the forum was to create a direct intellectual communication line between Russian leadership and international expert community. Further, Valdai Club uh, and Forum expanded their activities to make a Russian platform for the discussion of the most important international issues. So now we have about 150 participants who join our annual conference, which takes place every year in October in Sochi, in the south of Russia. Every year at the same place. And every year, the last fourth day of the forum is attended by the Russian president. So, and we managed to uh, develop this forum, as I said, as a pl platform where uh, Russian and international experts can meet together and discuss not only the bilateral relationships, not only the role and place of Russia, but also the most important topics uh, connected to the global developments. Uh, last year, we established together with our Indian friends in uh, Observer Research Foundation, uh, Russia-India Expert Forum and Dialogue. The first meeting has taken place in Moscow in March. The next one is going to be in March this year in New Delhi. The idea behind this initiative was to bring the expert discussion between India and Russia out of the traditional and relatively narrow bilateral agenda. We have clear understanding that India is a very important great power of this century. Russia is a well-established superpower. Uh, so it is quite normal that we didn't have such a platform before where Indian and Russian distinguished experts can together address the most important problems of the global development and compare their approaches, their strategic visions of the world around us and our relationships with the most important partners such as Europe, the United States and China. So it covers both politics and business and development. Would you say that's the spread? Yes, of the I think that our departure point is understanding the connectivity between international politics and international economics and development of the business climate and international investment. So we cannot discuss and we cannot address these issues separately. And basically, during our annual conference and during the bilateral dialogues, which we have with India, with China, Russia, Asia as well, some other partners, we address all these issues with a specific focus every time. But of course, global business, international economics and politics are always addressed. Now, strictly in looking at the India-Russia uh, dynamic, you know, um, trade volumes have been low for a long time, although I understand they seem to have gone up a bit. And there are a whole lot of areas where we are looking at uh, possibly collaborating in future, including I understand Russia's Far East. So what are the, um, I know it's still early, you just had one meeting of the India uh, Forum, but um, are there any uh, tentative um, conclusions or any solutions you've come up with to try and push the India-Russia relationship forward? Well, personally, I never think in terms of the conclusions. Uh, for me, the debate and joint addressing the issues is very important. 
even possibly more important than concrete solutions, especially now. Uh, the relationships between India and Russia are extremely friendly. We don't have any contradicting interests. That's why we need to understand the strategic visions better. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Right. Because we need to keep these relationships as they are. Uh, the trade between India and Russia reflects uh, the actual abilities of the countries mm -hmm. to propose something and actual demand of the countries for the certain goods. Uh, this trade is nowadays limited to the certain number of the sectors of yeah. the economy. Yeah. We have many discussions about how to develop it and how to overcome their objective transportation and logistics obstacles, which we do have, yeah. if we simply look at the map. Yeah. Well, Russia and India being yeah, distanced, so far apart, yeah. very far away, and in terms of the land connectivity, India has certain limitations, as the mountains, the north, yeah. east, and your northwestern neighbors do not offer excellent opportunities yeah. for the development of yeah. transportation and logistics. So we do understand it. And we do welcome Indian engagement in Russia's turn to the East policy. Uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi was the special guest of the Eastern Economic Forum yeah. in Vladivostok last year in September. He made an excellent speech. And uh, among uh, the political issues which he did raise, he also proposed, he initiated 1 billion US dollars government or credit line for those Indian companies which want to engage better into economic cooperation with the Russian Far East. So basically bringing Chennai and Vladivostok closer yeah, yeah. by the financial instrument. Mm -hmm. This is already very important new development which has been taken seriously, very seriously in Russia. Um, apart from the India-Russia thing, um, there's also the India-China equation, you know. Yes. Uh, how does this play out in this little triangle that we have here? Uh, well, on the high political level, we have RIG Forum, Russia, India, China, which exists for many years already yeah. and which proves to be a very good platform for our leaders to compare their views. We understand that we do share the same geographical space or for a greater Eurasia. Mm -hmm. We do understand that our security considerations are very much connected. All three countries need stability in the neighborhood between them, mm -hmm. Afghanistan and Central Asia. So we have a very good initial point to discuss, and it means that India, China, Russia, India, Russia, China will get to the table of negotiations, of the cooperative negotiations anyway. So we cannot consider these relationships as uh, competitive by nature. Mm -hmm. They are competitive by the cases, but not by the nature. So that's why Russia believes that Indian and Chinese interests can be better uh, served and better accommodated within the multilateral frameworks mm -hmm. of the Eurasian cooperation. Mm -hmm. So you believe that uh, the uh, differences that we have, India and China, are not, in that sense, going to be long-lasting. At some point, there will be a meeting, some convergence of some kind, when possibly this cooperation can go forward. We believe that the interests of development of India and of China, they are not contradicting. We believe that what India needs for the de national development is not a challenge for China mm -hmm. and vice versa. We believe that India and China, the biggest and greatest nations of Asia and Eurasia, are wise enough not to be provoked to the aggravation of their relationships. And we do see some diplomatic corridor of, for the maneuver for Russia to be a constructive contributor and participant of these relationships. Now, India is a member of SCO. Yes. Good. 
uh, now does that uh, kind of um, form some kind of um, synergy here with the wildlife forum the seo uh, today we have been speaking with the secretary general of seo who joined one of the sessions yeah. wildlife club session at racina dialogue and uh, he is relatively optimistic judging on the first lessons for first results of the indian membership in seo uh, Russia considers SEO as a very important regional diplomatic platform. Uh, for Russia, it is good to have India in. For Russia, it is important to convince Chinese that they should not be afraid of having India in. Okay. <laughs> so okay. this is what we are doing. Actually, <laughs> this is what we are doing because Russia is a global superpower. But in terms of the population, mm -hmm. Russia is not such a big country. Yeah. Only yeah. 145 millions of people. Yeah. Ten, almost 10 times smaller than, respectively, India or China. Or China yeah. So Russia needs to achieve its national goals, not on the solely bilateral or unilateral basis, mm -hmm. but more and more on the development of the multilateral international formats. So how does Russia respond to India getting closer to the US and the Indo-Pacific? There is a difference of opinion there, isn't there? Uh, well, we have different opinions. We have a strong uh, group of the experts who believe that the, our American partners will try to make Indo-Pacific concept uh, as a sort of, to make out of it uh, the instrument to contain China. Yeah. But at the same time, we believe that India is uh, too big to become American uh, younger ally. And Indian leadership understands the size of India and the role of India. So even though Americans may have their interpretation of Asia Pacific, India's interpretation belongs to India, not to the United States. So the thing is that we need not only to discuss the American reading of India-Pacific, yeah. but also to incorporate our Eurasian ideas with Indian vision of India-Pacific. Mm -hmm. And you think it's somewhere down the line, these things, these contradictions will kind of uh, roll over? Well, I think that we have many possibilities to make the greater Eurasia and Indian version of Indo-Pacific concepts compatible, not competitive. Mm -hmm. And do you see the issues in Afghanistan, um, in Pakistan? Uh, the, these are obviously coming in the way of India's connectivity with the Eurasian yes, landmass. Yes, of course, yes. So is there any effort being made to, you know, uh, at, at the Russia's level to resolve them? Well, I think it is better to address Russian diplomatic authorities mm -hmm. regarding the very difficult Afghanistan issue, yeah. uh, which is a very much diplomatic and security problem. So my field is more international development, international True, cooperation yeah. and diplomatic dialogue. So overall, where would you see the forum heading, the Indian leg of the forum? Uh, I think that we should step by step develop uh, the ability of Russian experts to speak with a good understanding of Indian considerations and Indian experts to speak with a good understanding of Russian considerations. And it is will be a big result already. Yeah, and is there a melding of technologies, expertise? Are you looking at that also? I don't think that we need any melding. I don't think that we need to try to achieve the common view I think we need to develop understanding, the rational understanding that things which we want to be done can be done only in a way which will incorporate the approaches of our partner. Mr. Bundarshiv, thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs>